Welcome to a new video. In this video, we will talk about the seasons. Seasons. A season is a division of the year based on changes in weather, ecology, and the number of daylight hours in a given region. On Earth, seasons are the result of Earth's orbit around the Sun and Earth's axial tilt relative to the ecliptic plane. In temperate and polar regions, the seasons are marked by changes in the intensity of sunlight that reaches the Earth's surface, variations of which may cause animals to undergo hibernation or to migrate, and plants to be dormant. Various cultures define the number and nature of seasons based on regional variations, and as such there are a number of both modern and historical cultures whose number of seasons varies. The Northern Hemisphere experiences more direct sunlight during May, June, and July, as the hemisphere faces the sun. The same is true of the Southern Hemisphere in November, December, and January. It is Earth's axial tilt that causes the sun to be higher in the sky during the summer months, which increases the solar flux. However, due to seasonal lag, June, July, and August are the warmest months in the Northern Hemisphere while December, January, and February are the warmest months in the Southern Hemisphere. In temperate and subpolar regions, four seasons based on the Gregorian calendar are generally recognized, spring, summer, autumn or fall, and winter. Ecologists often use a six-season model for temperate climate regions which are not tied to any fixed calendar dates, pervernal, vernal, estival, serotonal, autumnal, and hibernal. Many tropical regions have two seasons, the rainy, wet, or monsoon season and the dry season. Some have a third cool, mild, or harmattan season. Seasons can also be dictated by the timing of important ecological events such as hurricane season, tornado season, and wildfire season. Some examples of historical importance are the ancient Egyptian seasons, flood, growth, and low water which were previously defined by the former annual flooding of the Nile in Egypt. Seasons often hold special significance for agrarian societies, whose lives revolve around planting and harvest times, and the change of seasons is often attended by ritual. The definition of seasons is also cultural. In India, from ancient times to the present day, six seasons or ritu based on South Asian religious or cultural calendars are recognized and identified for purposes such as agriculture and trade. The seasons result from the Earth's axis of rotation being tilted with respect to its orbital plane by an angle of approximately 23.4 degrees. This tilt is also known as obliquity of the ecliptic regardless of the time of year, the northern and southern hemispheres always experience opposite seasons. This is because during summer or winter, one part of the planet is more directly exposed to the rays of the sun than the other, and this exposure alternates as the Earth revolves in its orbit. For approximately half of the year, from around March 20th to around September 22nd, the Northern Hemisphere tips toward the Sun, with the maximum amount occurring on about June 21st. For the other half of the year, the same happens, but in the Southern Hemisphere instead of the Northern, with the maximum around December 21st. The two instants when the Sun is directly overhead at the equator are the equinoxes. Also at that moment, both the North Pole and the South Pole of the Earth are just on the terminator, and hence day and night are equally divided between the two hemispheres. Around the March equinox, the Northern Hemisphere will be experiencing spring as the hours of daylight increase, and the Southern Hemisphere is experiencing autumn as daylight hours shorten. The effect of axial tilt is observable as the change in day length and altitude of the sun at solar noon, the sun's culmination during the year. The low angle of sun during the winter months means that incoming rays of solar radiation are spread over a larger area of the Earth's surface, so the light received is more indirect and of lower intensity. Between this effect and the shorter daylight hours, the axial tilt of the Earth accounts for most of the seasonal variation in climate in both hemispheres. Compared to axial tilt, other factors contribute little to seasonal temperature changes. The seasons are not the result of the variation in Earth's distance to the Sun because of its elliptical orbit. In fact, Earth reaches perihelion, the point in its orbit closest to the Sun, in January, and it reaches aphelion, the point farthest from the Sun, in July, so the slight contribution of orbital eccentricity opposes the temperature trends of the seasons in the Northern Hemisphere. 
In general, the effective orbital eccentricity on Earth seasons is a 7% variation in sunlight received. Orbital eccentricity can influence temperatures, but on Earth, this effect is small and is more than counteracted by other factors. Research shows that the Earth as a whole is actually slightly warmer when farther from the Sun. This is because the northern hemisphere has more land than the southern, and land warms more readily than sea. Any noticeable intensification of southern winters and summers due to Earth's elliptical orbit is mitigated by the abundance of water in the southern hemisphere. Seasonal weather fluctuations changes also depend on factors such as proximity to oceans or other large bodies of water, currents in those oceans, El Niño slash Enso and other oceanic cycles, and prevailing winds. In the temperate and polar regions, seasons are marked by changes in the amount of sunlight, which in turn often causes cycles of dormancy in plants and hibernation in animals. These effects vary with latitude and with proximity to bodies of water. For example, the South Pole is in the middle of the continent of Antarctica and therefore a considerable distance from the moderating influence of the Southern Oceans. The North Pole is in the Arctic Ocean, and thus its temperature extremes are buffered by the water. The result is that the South Pole is consistently colder during the Southern Winter than the North Pole during the Northern Winter. The seasonal cycle in the polar and temperate zones of one hemisphere is opposite to that of the other. When it is summer in the Northern Hemisphere, it is winter in the Southern, and vice versa. The tropical and subtropical regions see little annual fluctuation of sunlight. However, seasonal shifts occur along a rainy, low-pressure belt called the Intertropical Convergence Zone itch. As a result, the amount of precipitation tends to vary more dramatically than the average temperature. When the zone is north of the equator, the northern tropics experience their wet season, while the southern tropics have their dry season. This pattern reverses when the zone migrates to a position south of the equator. Meteorological seasons are reckoned by temperature, with summer being the hottest quarter of the year and winter the coldest quarter of the year. In 1780 the Societas Meteorological Palatina, which became defunct in 1795, an early international organization for meteorology, defined seasons as groupings of three whole months as identified by the Gregorian calendar. Ever since, professional meteorologists all over the world have used this definition. Therefore, for temperate areas in the Northern Hemisphere, spring begins on the 1st of March, summer on the 1st of June, autumn on the 1st of September, and winter on the 1st of December. For the Southern Hemisphere temperate zone, spring begins on the 1st of September, summer on the 1st of December, autumn on the 1st of March, and winter on the 1st of June. In Australasia the meteorological terms for seasons apply to the temperate zone that occupies all of New Zealand, New South Wales, Victoria, Tasmania, the southeastern corner of South Australia and the southwest of Western Australia, and the southeast Queensland areas south of Brisbane.